Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today, we're gonna to be doing another primer for the new MTG Arena format, Timeless. Think Arena Vintage. Every card is legal. Every card is true to paper printing. There are three cards restricted, Demonic Tutor, Tibbled Trickery, and Channel. Alchemy cards are legal. However, it's not the like nerfed uh, Unholy Heat or nerfed Omnath. It's a true to print. People on the other video are commenting, oh, they think Alchemy cards are gonna be overrun. I'd be surprised if like five of them saw play um, at most. Like when you could do turn one Necropotence, you could win the game on turn two or turn three in some cases with like Dark Ritual and like all these ridiculous spells. A lot of them are just kind of vanilla-ish creatures in comparison. So I think wait to see what the format looks like and kind of go from there. But um, today we are going to be looking at a number of creatures and kind of the considerations of where they might slot, type of archetype, stuff like that for the format. Um, I'm going to be putting individual decks together ahead of for day one, and then we'll come up with stats as soon as they're available as well. If you're looking for interaction, counter spells, removal options, I already did a video on that, so more of the spells-based option. I'll do this one on creatures, and then I'm going to do one on kind of build around cards, things that kind of have themes and kind of what goes in those respective packages um, so we'll kind of see from that angle there uh, i tried to be so i got 82 creatures here i went to try to think of as many as possible let me know in the comments if i missed any or you disagree i'm always open to dialogue we're exploring this new format together um, so i really welcome um, for the creatures i'm going to preface there's going to be a caveat and you're going to hear me say this a lot uh, dependent on how much bowmaster we see that is going to be a big consideration. When Bowmaster was historic legal, it did kind of curb the type of creatures that were being played, the archetype, stuff like that. So that's something to consider. There's also a couple creatures and kind of strategies I'm unsure of, but I'm going to explain my rationale. So in some cases, things like having addition of fetch lands makes me think twice or makes me wonder, like, could this card be viable? Um, or like really quick like in the case of wicked wolf wicked wolf was pretty solid and standard when it was played alongside oko and gilded goose like the food package i don't know if that's still reasonable but it could be so that's something that we want to kind of see as we kind of go through but in any case let's jump into it and we are going to start off with our one drops and the first in the installment of depends on how much bowmaster there is esper sentinel very powerful cards he's playing modern um Tax effect that really punishes your opponent for casting non-creatures, plays into artifact shells, plays into human shells. Just a really good all-around creature. Definitely can see play, incidentally gets hit by Bowmaster, so kind of rough. Giver of Ruins, Mother of Ruins uh, with added upside. Potentially, yes, no, maybe, but protection spell if you're playing a creature package, if you're playing like a white weenie package, a uh, hate bears package, this is definitely going to be in something like that. I added Delver because Delver sees legacy play and like vintage play. I actually don't think Delver's good in the format. I'm gonna come out and say it. Dies the Bowmaster. The big thing with like Delver in those formats is they have Force of Will and Days and Force of Negation. So uh you can play it on one and have protection for it. I don't think you're afforded that same in this format because we don't have any like zero mana counter spells to protect it. So I actually don't think Delver is good. I just wanted to kind of highlight my thoughts in terms of why that is. Definitely think Death Shadow with the advent of various fetch lines and shock lines could definitely be a thing. We're going to get the, in cons, the voracious counterspell. I forget the one. So we, I think we have a lot of the cards very similar. Obviously, we're missing Street Wraith, but there's a lot of cards that overlap with the modern Grixis Death Shadow deck. So I think that's something that can potentially be replicated in a similar fashion. This next one's a little odd. I think this card's actually pretty solid in the format. If we look at a lot of the themes, like it either ramps you or it trades and the minus one one deals with a lot of the creatures that are fairly problematic in the format. Uh, Ragavan, Dragon Rage Chandler, If Delver Sees Play, Esper Sentinel, your opponents, Bowmasters, uh, any sort of L, like mana dorks that are not too toughness. I think, like I was playing it in my Golgari Storm deck, uh, because it both served as an early removal spell, blocker, but also happened to be treasure, could be sacked to deadly dispute, stuff of that nature. 
don't sleep on shambling ass is the only thing i'm saying i don't think like it's obviously not like ragavan levels but i think it's a reasonable utility creature dependent on the meta dragon rage chandler a nerf version very very good card plays with mishra's bobble lot with fetch lines now lots of ways to turn delirium on helps fuel your graveyard plays really nicely with things like uro or croxa or dreadhorde arcanist and then if you have delirium it's a 3-3 attacker for with flying for one mana which is great value um i'm just going to call this the prowess package swiss spear and skull soul scar mage if there's like an is it tempo deck stuff like that we're going to be getting treasure cruise with cons of tark here um and i think that's definitely something that could be a thing uh prowess tempo kind of uh we don't have a symmetry sage is back to its original printing so it's a one mana zero two that gives plus two so not as good as the historic version the monkey number one monkey ragavan nimble pilfer uh very very playable card runs away with the game on its own card advantage ramp can be dashed a whole bunch of good value haywire mites the original printing it's not the buff that we have in historic but i still think this is a pretty good utility card especially since it hits the ring and a lot of incidental enchantments uh delighted halfling i think is the premier ramp uh card or one mana dork makes all your legendaries uncounterable so uros okos turn two uncounterable to fairy th like three mana to fairy on turn two uncounterable then your opponent can't cast counter spells seems great gilded use is really here for oko decks i think this is only good if you're playing it with oko to keep getting the food tokens to continue the ramp wild nakadal uh because we have fetch lines the combination of Wild Nakadal and Territorial Kavu, I think there can be some sort of Domain Zoo deck. With the Fetch Lines, you can now play one of, of the Triomes to just get it to hit Domain. So it's easier to enable than playing like the Plane Cycling and then generally playing Tap Lines and stuff like that. Young Wolf's in here just because it plays with Yawgmoth, but Yawgmoth will be a very formidable deck, I would imagine. Uh, and this is Modern Playable. They laughed at me when I crafted four Deathrite Shamans because I didn't buy the Explorer Anthology. But Deathrite, this card's banned in Modern, plays beautifully Little Planeswalker at home, fetch lines, fuel its mana ability, graveyard hate, uh, as well as like drain and gain. Perfect card. Uh, Thalia, again, this is going to be dependent on how much Bowmaster. If there's like a Hate Bear deck, it can definitely come in. Ledger Shredder, I think it's another card that's dependent on how much. Uh, there is going to be a Bowmaster. It's a little susceptible to Bowmaster's draw ability, so it pings, but we also have Swords of Plowshare, Fatal Push, and Lightning Bolt, which can all potentially answer this at various points for one mana. Snapcaster Mage, lots of cheap instants and counters, so very, very strong. Thassa's Oracle's in here for Tainted Pack deck. It's its primary win condition. I think turn three you could potentially win with it, or turn four on average. Misery Shadow, I'm unsure of, but I think both Misery Shadow and Kalidus, which we have here. The win dies exile. If there's like sacrifice combo decks like Yogmoth, I think that's reasonable as a way to kind of approach it there. Orcish Bowmaster, the card that we have its own theme dies to Bowmaster, one of the most powerful creatures printed in a while. Punishes on all different axes, drawing cards, playing one power creatures, uh, is a win condition on its own. Uh, Bloodgast. I think Blood Gas could be interesting if there's like graveyard centric decks. Um, keeps coming back. I don't think Dredge necessarily gets anything in this format beyond what's in Historic. Might be too weak, especially with one toughness, but I think this card is reasonable. Dreadhorde Arcanist, very, very strong in a format with a bunch of very powerful one and potentially two mana spells. Uh, especially if you can buff it, like we see in the Historic Wizards deck. And Historic is a Wizards is the best deck in the format. Uh, or one of the best decks so always something to consider inti is a card i'm unsure of it's being seen playing pioneer it's i've seen lists in historic that try it out i don't think it's necessarily top of the mark but i think it's interesting especially potentially some lurish shells like maybe like a gen mid-range or something like that so potentially i would explore i wouldn't be shocked if inti's in a list but i don't think it necessarily is top of the mark similar with moss with dread knight i think a lot of what it has going is very strong with it. Card draw, again, getting around Bowmaster, Recursive Body, 2 mana, 3, 2, that can come back. I think it's all reasonable stats in that line. A land liberator would be more of a sideboard card. I think this is one of the better um, like creatures that can also 
blow up artifacts and enchantments alongside like haywire might so just a kind of another effect there questing druid has taken over multiple eternal formats as the seek the beast ability for card advantage and then just like the miracle grow getting bigger so definitely a staple here scavenging ooze i think is a reasonable graveyard hate piece um that can see play lavinia so sorry one thing in general anything green um typically will be played in a shell like with quarter calling at times so just or collected company so you have a more increase to play silver bullets and stuff like that that could be see play lavinia is very good against um anything that's trying to play like zero mana spells uh so kind of getting value there if kethis is very popular you can do stuff like that so that's one way around it first how many cards we go through like 20 first alchemy card and i think this one's even borderline juggernaut peddler two mana two two kind of thought sees get rid of their worst card in hand give them a juggernaut instead i think it's a good hate bear piece it's an etb effect as opposed to um like a static staying around so i think that's fine Priest of the Fell writes, if there is a reanimator deck, this will be a piece of the reanimator deck. If, there's, if graveyards are too contentious of an area to fight over, this card won't see play. Plain and simple. Crocs up. The Titan's very strong. Sees play in a lot of eternal formats um, with lots of ways like Dragon Rage Chandler, uh, ways to throw things in the graveyard, kind of that grind out Rakdos style gameplay. Very strong there. Voice of Resurgence, I think, is a reasonable card, potentially as a sideboard against heavy counterspell based decks. Uh, those same counterspell decks will be playing Swords to Plowshare, so that is a consideration, but it could potentially see play. Second Alchemy card. I think this card is only going to see play if the combo is feasible. There was the Ominous Traveler, Ashnaught, Altar, kind of infinite, play a bunch of cards, steal all their stuff, get everything, haste, kill them. Uh, if it seems playable, then maybe, but if not, like if it's too slow for the format, too interactable, then that might be something to just consider there. Arkan of Emeria is going to be the anti-storm hate, but between this and the next card, Thalia of Heretic Cathar, both have a very strong clause of non-basic lines your opponent control under the battlefield tap. Well, guess what? Their fetch line enters tapped for that turn, so they can't activate the fetch line that turn. They then fetch. If they fetch for a non-basic, that also enters the battlefield tap. So you kind of double tax them in terms of their uh, like land generating abilities. Uh, Tishana's Tidebinder shut down a whole bunch of activated abilities. This is seeing play in a whole bunch of formats. Shut down your opponent's fetch line activation. We are going to hate fetches. Uh, shut down your opponent's uh, Kethis activation. Uh, and then kind of keep it frozen in that. So lots of ways to hit that. Vendillion Click probably won't work in a Bowmaster format, but I've been seeing like Elliot Dragon was playing Modern and was playing a. Is it. Ro uh, fairies deck maybe i saw some sc screenshots so this could potentially see play a card again i don't think is good enough but something maybe so graveyard trespasser can eat uros croxas contend with the graveyard the reason i like something like this the ward at least two for one so there's a lot of answers for it lightning bolt source plowshare a whole bunch of things but at least it forces your opponent to two for one you which gets you some value with that Bone Crusher Giant breaks the One Rings uh, protection. The two for one. There's a lot of cheap creatures. The removal's fine. A card I'm actually interested to try out is Breaches. I don't think it'll ultimately be playable since it dies to a lot of the one mana. But given that Ragavan's a pirate, and eventually when we get to Crucius, if Crucius does see play, it's a pirate. I think all its abilities are super reasonable. Probably doesn't end up seeing play. Um, the big thing that you see at times, like, in legacy like pirate stompy or like random creature stompy it's typically because you have ancient tomb and city of traders which allows you to turn one at times with like various accelerants uh these three drops so you kind of get ahead in those formats removal is not as heavy tends to be more counter spell based at times um so you kind of cheat in here this is at times likely still going to be a three drop in your deck honorary creature fable the mirror breaker very good card, I think a sees play. Lelia's in here because it's actually a two-card combo with Tainted Pack. Uh, you cast Tainted Pack to exile your entire deck. If your opponent doesn't block or doesn't have a blocker, it gets power equal to the number of cards you exile from your library, so it could like splinter twin them. Ferocidon is here as a sideboard card against Field of the Dead. I think it's a reasonable choice. Ping your opponent to death. That way there. Season Pyromancer, I love this is my probably one of my favorite cards. 
uh card draw in red love it um but i was playing this in my mono red blood moon deck in no bandless historic with a lot of success and this card here will again kind of playing into bowmaster we saw it kind of go away with bowmaster but something to kind of consider there the card i'm actually interested to see is titania voice of gaia with fetch lands it's very easy to get lands into your graveyard you can play like a mono green or two color deck and kind of still enable it you gain life from the fetch lands going into play and then it, it's a big creature on its own it dodges lightning bolts which is a reasonable approach uh, and it blocks a lot of these small flyers things like dragon rage chandler stuff like that so this one's more of an interesting one Luris is going to be a mainstay and staple of the format it will be the companion in many decks it is banned in a lot of formats because it's too good crucius this is one of the cards that may see play i think as an alchemy card but then again since it was nerfed to a 3-1 uh bowmaster pretty much kept it in check so you didn't see as much of it this dies to so many different one and two mana removal spells at instant speed plus a bunch of two mana counters and counter spell um memory lapse everything like that so i don't think it'll see too much play but people will still probably try to force it it is Suku, Creature, Saiga. I think this is really good in a format with a lot of one mana permanence. Jarsal. So this creature probably is the one out of any alchemy creature that I think would see play. It's very good in like a Jun midrange or teamer uh, kind of spells based deck. It does die to Lightning Bolt, those same kind of things. One mana removal spells counter, stuff like that. But if it could get rolling, it's like a free Snapcaster Mage every turn uh, as it scales up. I think it's reasonable. Again, Maybe not, but out of the alchemy cards, it's probably the closest to it. Lothus, just good sticky graveyard hate. Renegade Rallier is a card that gets much better in a format with fetch lands, since you could enable Revolt fairly easy. Um, and you can get a card from your library, uh, or from your graveyard, so you can kind of get value, you can double ramp, stuff like that. Uro, one of the best creatures ever. Pretty self-explanatory. Kethis combo. Kethis combo is for arguably first or second best deck. It's that in Wizards in Historic. Very strong combo deck there. Um, the interesting thing to see is there's a lot of cheap interaction. How that plays out. Card that is Alchemy that may see play, but again, it's dependent on the kind of con context of is Hate Bears a thing. It's basically White Collected Company, but instead of, it it brings itself a friend along. Uh, in creatures heavy shells Kalidus we mentioned shieldred very powerful effect potentially turn one it with dark rituals uh, which is kind of sweet yogmoth is the combo on its own, or like the combo deck built around the yogmoths themselves um then arc like phoenix so like would be a phoenix deck between brainstorm sleight of hand expressive iteration likely something in that realm Questing Beast saw some modern play to break the One Ring protection with the number of Planeswalkers we'll likely see to fairies. It doesn't kill Oko on its own, but it at least deals a chunk out of them that way. Wicked Wolf was a card, like I said, situational. I want to see how it plays in that like Simic or Simic X kind of food shell. Draina and Lenvala is usually a card that comes out of the sideboard in Yogmirs or like Sackmirs. It can basically turn off your opponent's creatures' activated abilities. It's very good in like a court of calling shell. I think it's a reasonable kind of sideboard card uh, to consider in that regard. Crackling Drake's in here because it's a going to be a sideboard card likely in either a Phoenix deck once the graveyard gets shut off, or it's another card similar to Lelia that with Tainted Pack, it's an alternate win condition. So with the Tainted Pack decks, I think it's either going to be Grixis or Esper. Um, I think I like Grixis more because you have these two alternate win conditions. So you can effectively have Tainted Pact, plus Thassa's Oracle, Jace Wielder of Mysteries, Crackling Drake, or Lelia to kind of win in a whole bunch of different ways there. Bloodbraid Elf, I think if you're doing like a Domain Zoo deck, it's super reasonable, it gets you from free value. Winota will likely be a deck on its own. Um, depending on how you do, some of the decks will just do kind of fair creature beatdowns. You can go Agent of Treachery, you can go Angrath's Marauder if you want to go bigger. I think I like the versions that are like Mardu that are kind of like hate bears and get some free value and kind of tax your opponent that way. Omnath is 4 mana in this format, and Omnath has fetch lands. 
Uh, so four color, five color piles, domain, ley line binding, a whole bunch of kind of value, very similar to kind of like the Beans modern deck without the evoke creatures. I think Elish Norn, Mother of Ruins could shut off a lot of ETB abilities. Big thing here is it dodges Unholy Heat um, and dodges a lot of kind of the cheaper removal at seven toughness and five mana. Knight of Aaron Eos, depending on like if there's creature aggressive decks that go wide, we could see the Convoke just because it's effectively a free card. Yorin Companions, Jinganta Companions, likely we'll see some play. Torrential Gearhawk, maybe, depending on control shells, could see some amount, but probably not good enough. I actually don't think Carnage Tyrant's terrible at a green deck. There's likely going to be a large number of these blue-white control decks because people got three mana to fairy and a bunch of counter spells, so they're going to go to town, and they're going to heavily rely on those counter spells. They will likely also rely on Divine Purges. So I could see maybe two to three Supreme Verdicts is the only real clear answer. This dodges Wandering Emperor, dodges to Fairy Tux, to Fairy Bounces, all the counter spells, um, Source of Plowshare. So not an unreasonable card. This is a joke, but greatest creature ever printed, Colossal Dreadmaw. Yes, yes. I was hoping to save that one for last, but it snuck up on us. Primeval Titan will be played in the Field of the Dead decks. You can either do Transmogrify to get it or just straight ramp versions. Um, Sarah's Emissary, if there's a reanimator deck, this would be one of the targets. Lock out some creature types. Villamachus, this can be the Transmogrify into taking turns by doing um, Time Warp, and you can keep getting it back. That's a deck, again, that was a very popular deck that got banned in Historic. Atraxa is going to be a reanimator threat, a cheat into play threat. This is whatever deck's cheating on mana, Atraxa will be at the center fold of it. Uh, you can go natural order into it as an option if you play like natural order elves. Uh, another card that would be a target in natural order elves is Crater Hoof Behemoth or World Spine Worm. So it's usually those three as kind of the top end. So you play like the Elves Ramp deck, natural order, find one of these big bombs in the top end. And then two cards, I don't know how well just like straight ramp or like a colorless kind of ramp shell would be, but Leveler and Ulamog are both kind of considerations. I don't think they see tons of play, but if you're playing big dumb things, those are always considerations for big dumb things. I think with Swords Splasher in the format, this gets worse though. Um, the big thing is this was very difficult for them to deal with, but when it's uh, easy, like one mana, get rid of your 10 cast creature, not the best. Like the cast trigger at least plays well against the counter spells that you get some value, but otherwise. So that is it. I welcome your thoughts. That was a lot of talking. Um, as you can tell, I'm very excited for this format. I'll get out some deck lists. If you have some general ideas, kind of concepts, stuff like that, drop in the comments as well. Um, but I'll probably do like start off with like five decks for day one and then part one. And then if I get enough time, I'll do like a part two type thing. In any case, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great one and uh, see you next time.